All right, you can go ahead and head back to your seats. Head back to your seats. Head back to your seats. All right, head back, head back, head back, head back. Hey, and while you're heading back to your seat, go ahead and tell your neighbor about a time where you were really tired. Tell your neighbor about a time that you were really tired. All right, well, hopefully you got a chance to tell your neighbor about that time when you're tired. Here's the truth. There are a lot of reasons why we might be tired, right? Maybe you're tired because you're just not getting enough sleep. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I know that's me sometimes. I don't get enough sleep. I was actually researching before I came here, and apparently less than 10% of teenagers get enough sleep every night, less than 10%. And I know as I say that, your leaders or, or your parents would probably be like, yep, that's true, they don't get, get enough sleep. But maybe also the reason you might be tired might be based on the fact that you spend a lot of time on screens. The average person spends five to nine hours a day on a screen. Five to nine hours on a screen every single day. So cell phones, tablets, watching TV, watching YouTube, video games, whatever that is, you're just on screens all the time. I, I also wanted to actually just, just show you a couple of pictures of, of me when I was tired. There's, this first one was, was me and my, oh, that's the second one. So this one was when I was in college and we were on a long road trip and I was exhausted. Oh. That one, it switched to the other one, that's okay. This one was me and my now wife when we're on the way back. I'm from Chicago, we're on the way back from um, an event and I was just really tired, so I just not had to take a lot. Are you guys clapping for Chicago? Oh, are you clapping for, for me or Chicago? What? Oh, oh, married, okay, yes, good, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, actually, so this is funny, I, I'm glad you clapped for that because in literally like a week, we'll celebrate one year being married, one year. Yes, yeah. We're going, we're going to Cancun, it's gonna be amazing. I'm really, really excited. But uh, so there's, there's just all types of reasons why you're tired, but there might be another reason why you're tired and you might be tired because you are, have been going through something really hard or difficult or challenging and you're just like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna get through the situation that I'm going through. I'm tired of fighting the emotions that I feel. I'm tired of dealing with the situation and, and it just makes you really, really tired. And honestly, if that's you, I can relate to that because about a year and a half ago, I got a text from one of my friends and he let me know that uh, one of our mutual friends had actually passed away 24 hours before really unexpectedly. This was like a really close mentor of mine. His name is Jared. There's a picture that'll come up on the screen of, of me and Jared. And, and I'll, I'll just tell you that when I got this text, I mean, devastated wasn't, well, I mean, that was just an understatement. I just could not believe that my friend had passed away and, and I was never gonna see him again and it was crushing. And I'll tell you in that moment, I felt a, a deep sadness and, and just felt the loss of that, but that loss quickly actually changed to intense anger. Because what you need to know about Jared is Jared is someone who was a pastor, he's a, he's a father, he was a son, he was a friend, he was one of my closest mentors. He had done so much good in the world, and I just could not understand how someone like Jared could be taken away so quickly, so unexpectedly, just like that, would never see him again. And in the moment, I didn't know what to do with that anger. It was, it was really frustrating, and I just didn't know how I was going to navigate it and deal with it. And I, and I just got to a point where, man, I was just tired of, of, of feeling this, this pain and, and this frustration and this anger in my life. 
And you might be thinking uh, as you hear that story, you're like, you know what, Joe, I'm, I'm actually tired because of video games. I play a lot of video games. I stay up really late. Or, or maybe you're, you're thinking, hey, Joe, I'm tired because I play soccer, and, and, and soccer is really fun, but it takes up a lot of my energy, and it makes me tired. But I, I'm sorry about your friend, Jerry, but I haven't really experienced anything hard or difficult or challenging like that in my life to make me tired. And if that's you, if you're thinking that right now, I just want to tell you that you will. Because the truth is that all of us at some point or another are going to experience something that's going to be really hard and difficult and challenging in our life. And I know as I say that, that might feel like, man, I don't, I don't know about that. And because no one wants to, to feel that. But, but here's the good news. I believe that what we're going to be talking about for the rest of our time is going to hopefully allow us to be able to rest even in the moments when life is hard and difficult. Now, this morning, my friend Mallory did an amazing job of, of telling us about the fact that Jesus is the good shepherd. And one of the reasons why Jesus is good is because he knows us and he provides everything that we need. But the good news about that is that there is actually more. There's more. Look at your neighbor on your right and say, hey, there's more. Yes. All right, look at your neighbor on your left and say, there's more. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, so not only, not only does Jesus provide everything we need, not only does he know us, but also Jesus protects us. Jesus protects us. He's the good shepherd who protects his sheep. He wants to make sure that, that his sheep don't have to deal with any danger or things that might come along their way. Jesus is someone who says, hey, I want to make sure that my sheep are safe. Now, here's what you need to know about sheep, and I don't know if you know this or not, but sheep are not the smartest animal in the world. I mean, they're just, they're just not. Like, they just, they just do dumb things. They, they kind of need somebody to, to help them along the way and make sure they don't go in the wrong direction or they don't, they don't go to the places where they don't, don't go. So, I mean, the good news is that um, in, in, like, the farms or the, or the sheep folds or the places where sheep are, in John 10, it talks about the fact that there are, there are these workers that are there to help to protect and guide the sheep. Well, the problem is, is these, these workers, they're, they're hired workers. So when, you're, when you think about being hired, you are, you are hired for a job and you get paid for a job or to do something. And normally this is fine. This is all good. If you think about it, some of you might ha have a summer job. Maybe you are mowing lawns or, or maybe you babysit or, or maybe you are, are walking your, your neighbor's dog and you get, you get money for it. And, that, and that's great. I mean, we all have jobs that, that we have. But the challenge is is that when you think about someone who is hired to do a job, and more likely than not, they're not going to necessarily put their life on the line for the people that, that they are doing that job for. In fact, in John 10, it says that these hired workers, when there's wolves and when there's other animals and when, when, there's, when there's things that get in the way of the sheep being safe, they say, you know what, hey, I'm, I'm good. Sorry, sheep, like, you're, you're good, you, you're, you got to go, I, I don't know what to do with you, but, but I can't put my life on the line. This is just a job for me. I'm getting something for protecting you. But those sheep, they actually don't just need someone who is, is with them because they are hired. They actually need a shepherd. Honestly, me and you, we're a lot like sheep. There's a lot of times when we make decisions or, or we do things that, that we shouldn't do or, or we need guidance or direction or we need help with certain situations and things that are happening in our lives. And uh, what if I told you that we need a shepherd as well and I know somebody who would be that shepherd, not only for the sheep in John 10, 10 but for you and me as well. Now, before I continue on and tell you a little bit more about this, I'm, I'm going to do something. I need, I need a volunteer, but this is, this is who I need. I actually need someone from the red team. I need somebody from the red team. I need somebody from the red team. Okay. Whoever you're pointing to, send them. Whoever you're pointing to, send them. Whoever you're pointing to, send them. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. We, 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 love, we love everybody here. Everybody's all a part of God's family. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, my friend. All right. All right, what's your, what's your first name, my friend? 
Colton. All right, Colton, where, what church are you from? Grace Fellowship. Sorry, I don't know why I asked that. I feel like all of Red is from Grace Fellowship. Is this not true? Okay, that's what I, that's what I thought. I, I kind of knew that, but, but I asked you anyway. All right, Colton. Colton, what grade are you in? Sixth. What? Sixth. Sixth grade. Awesome. First mix? Awesome. You been having a good time so far? Yeah. Great. Great. Awesome. So here's what I'm going to do. Drew, um, can, you, can you come help me really quick? I, I, need, I need Drew to grab me something. So here's what's going to happen, Colton. So Colton, and behind Drew, he has a whipped cream pie. He has a whipped cream pie. And I don't know, for some reason, I, came, I feel like I came to Ohio strictly just to pie a kid in the face. Like, I, like it's just, that's just what I, that's just what I kind of want to do. And I mean, I don't, I don't have like a t-shirt for you, anything like that. I don't have anything to wipe it off with. Um, but I, I just, I just kind of want to, want to do that. Should I duck? How, how, how you feel about that? Should I duck? So you duck? Yeah. No, no, no. You're literally going to, going to take this pie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you okay with that? All right. All right. Cool. All right. So, so I'm going to take the pie from, from Drew and, um, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna do this mix. You guys are you guys are gonna gonna give me like we're gonna count up from three, and then I'm just gonna do this just because I, I want to and I and they gave me the mic so that's kind of how it's gonna go. All right, here we go. All right, all right, you guys ready? I I think they might be ready. I don't I don't know. Are you guys ready? Okay. I always feel bad about that. I didn't mean to shame you. I just felt like that was that was not good. Okay. All right, here we go. Three. Two, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right, Colton, hang out here for, for one second. I need one more volunteer from the yellow team. I need one more volunteer from the yellow team, from the yellow team. All right, all right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right, I'm gonna pick that young lady in that blue shirt, like, yep, yep, you. No, 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 not you, not you, not you, not you, the girl right there, yep, yep, you're jumping up and down. Yep, you, you, you. No, not you, not you, this one, come on, yep, yep, right here. Right here, Teal, Teal, yep, I'm pointing at you. Sorry, I wish I knew all your names. That would've, that would've made that way easier. All right, come on up, come on up, run on up. All right, what's your, what's your first name, my friend? Nora. Nora, what church are you from? North Terrace. North Terrace? Yes. Awesome, North Terrace? Yes. You're from North Terrace? <laughs> okay, all right, they, they're here. I think they're here, I think they're here. All right, great, North Terrace. Love that you guys are here. All right, what grade are you in, my friend? Eighth. All right, sorry, I literally forgot your name because I was messing with your, your school. Nora. Nora, perfect. All right, Nora, here's what's gonna happen. Nora, I'm gonna give you the same challenge that I gave Colton. So I, I just feel like, like someone actually just needs to step in and take this pie for Colton. Nora, like, would you be willing to do this? Yep. Okay, before, okay, so here's, here's what I wanna say too. Like, you're not getting anything from a, in return. Yep. Like, like, you're gonna just, just do it, you're good? Okay, all right, Colton, just hang out, hang out right here, hang out right here. All right, come on over just a little bit. Just wanna make sure you don't get on, get on my notes because I don't know what I'm gonna say. Yep. So, all right, here we go. We're gonna do this again, Mix Fam. You ready? All right, here we go, here we go. Three, two, one. Ooh, oh, man, ow. Oh. Woo, okay, that was. Wow, that went way messier than I thought. Guys, give it up for Nora and Colton. Give it up for them. Colton, go ahead and head to the back. I may, there may or may not be something backstage for you, some, a prize or, or something to wipe that off with or whatever that is. Hey, so remember when I told you that I knew someone who would actually be a shepherd for the sheep and for you and me, and honestly, you guys know him as well. And we've been talking about him already. His name is Jesus. Yeah, you can clap for that. Friends, here's the truth. Jesus is the good shepherd. And honestly, if Jesus was here in this room, he would have been the first person to raise his hand and say, me, me, me. I will take it for Colton because that is why Jesus came. He came not only to be our good shepherd and protect us and guide us and lead us, but he also came to lay his life down for each and every one of us. Friends, we don't need someone who says, hey, I'm just going to do right by you because I'm going to get something in return. No, we don't need a hired worker. We need a shepherd. 
And Jesus is the one who is the good shepherd. And what I love about that is the fact that this whipped cream, I, I know that, that this whipped cream feels like, oh, man, that's, that's not a big deal. That's, that's a, I mean, that's just, like, it's messy, but, but I mean, it's light. It's okay. Like, we're going to get her cleaned up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. But the reality is that our world is really messy, a lot more messier than, than just this whipped cream that, that's on the floor. I mean, I mean we, we have a lot of evil in the world. There's war. There's loss. There's shame. There's guilt, there's anger, there's fear. There's so many things in the world. And and Jesus came to say, hey, I I can walk with you in those moments. I can remind you that there's a God in heaven who loves and cares about you and wants to be with you in those moments where it's hard and difficult. Mix, I have a question for you. Are you looking for the shepherd? It's good. Good. It's good because because here's here's the truth. The shepherd is available for you, and he wants to be in a relationship with each and every one of you. He cares about you. He loves you so much, and he wants to make sure that you know that he is laying his life down for you. He lays this out in John 10 really well. Yeah. He lays us out in John 10. Check, check this out. This is, this is what he says in John 10. This is John 10, 14 through 18. It says, hey, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The father loves me because I sacrifice my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and also to take it up again for this is what my father commanded. Friend, Jesus came so that he can lay his life down for you and me because he's the good shepherd. There is nothing that we need to do to make him the good shepherd. He does it strictly because he loves us, and he cares about us, and he wants the best for us. And as I even think about that, I'm reminded of the fact that Psalm reminds us that, hey, even in the moments where life is difficult, God is with us. It's not just the moments where things are going good and there's good vibes and everything is going okay. God is with us even when life gets difficult. Check, check this out. This is what it says in Psalm 23, 4, it says, hey, even though I walk through the darkest valley, even though, even when you and me, we walk through the darkest valley, we don't have to be afraid. I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. He's close beside each and every one of us. His rod and his staff protects and comforts me and you. Mixed fam, here's what I know. There's going to be moments in your life where you question and you wonder, like, man, hey, is God even here? Is God with me in the moments where it's really hard and it's difficult and challenging? I mean, is he close to me when I'm facing the darkest valleys and things get really dark and get tough and gets challenging? The loss of a loved one or, or that anxiety that you feel when you're like, man, I just really need to get that grade and then you don't get it. And it's like, man, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Or that time when you're tempted and you just give in again because you do that thing, but you just can't release the temptation. And, and it's, it's just, man, it's just too strong. And you're just one wondering, man, is God with me? Here's what I want you to know. God sent his son for moments like that. He sent his son for moments like that. He knew, he knew that at one point, You are going to need someone to protect you, to comfort you, to encourage you, to lift you up, to make sure that in those darkest moments that you would be okay. He even sent his son knowing 
that his son didn't do anything wrong, that his son had made any mistakes, that he wasn't going to get anything in return, and he sent his son to lay down his life for each and every one of us. Friends, we don't have to be filled with weary. We don't have to be tired. We don't have to be filled with anxiety. Instead, mix, we can actually rest because the good shepherd laid down his life for us. Now, now here's, here's the thing. I, I told you earlier about my friend Jared and, and about how hard his death was for me and the anger that I felt and the, the frustration that I felt in those moments. And as I think about that, I just want you to know that there's going to be moments where we are going to face challenges. We're going to face valleys. We're going to face difficult things in our lives Maybe it's someone that you lose or, or maybe it's you lose that basketball game and you miss that shot and you, and you think like, man, hey, is it always going to be like this? Am I always going to struggle with those things in my life? And even in those moments, I want you to remember that, that Jesus laid down his life for us to make sure that we didn't have to walk through those things alone. Now, here's the, the cool thing that I love about the story of Jesus is, is that he was someone who experienced a cave. And oftentimes we, in our own lives, we experience caves or we experience a dark valley. We experience a time where, where it feels really dark and it feels like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what to do in this moment. But the good news is that when Jesus died on the cross, he ended up in a cave, otherwise known as a tomb. We typically refer to it as a tomb, but he didn't stay there. He didn't stay in the cave, and he didn't stay in the cave because that wasn't his home. His home was with the Father, and the same is true for you and me. Yeah. Mix, here's, here's what I'll, what I'll say. Here's what, here's what I'll say. We're going to face tough times. In fact, it's guaranteed. I want you to check out what it says in John 16, 33. It says, this is, this is just Jesus just straight up just letting, letting us know that, hey, this is what's going to happen. It says, hey, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Friends, tough times don't last. Jesus does because Jesus always, always wins. And Jesus is someone who has overcome every single thing that we've ever faced in our life, every single trial, every single sorrow, every single frustration or, or anger or shame or everything in our life. Jesus says, hey, you don't have to worry about those things because I got you. Now, I was, I was pretty, pretty angry about, about my friend Jared, and, and I told you that I, was, that I really ended up just kind of in this dark spot and in this season, and, and it was really frustrating, and I, was, and I was in this cave, and it was like, man, I don't really know how to get out until I remember that I don't face tough things alone. Jesus was always there. He was just waiting for me to, to, act, to realize that I needed him. So I was able to be really honest with God. And that's it's one of the things that, that you should always do is just be honest because he already knows what you're going through. He already knows what you're facing. He already knows the, the feelings that you have about every single thing that's going on in your life. So I was able to be honest and was able to really tell him the things that I was feeling. And, and in those moments, it was okay. So I was able to come out of the cave because I wasn't afraid of being able to say the things that I needed to say to God and express the anger, the frustration, all those things. He can take it. Now, here's the truth. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what your cave is. 
Maybe you have a cave of isolation because you, you just think like, hey, I don't know if anybody cares about me. I don't know if anybody loves me. I'm at mix, but I don't have any friends here or, or I'm just not having a good time. Or when I go back home, I'm, I'm really scared that, that nobody's going to be surrounding me. So I just feel like, like I'm just stuck in this cave of isolation. I don't know what to do. Maybe your cave is fear. Maybe you just don't know, you're, you're fearful of, of school starting up in a, in a little bit, or, or maybe you're fearful of something that's going on at home, or, or maybe there's shame. Maybe there's shame and you're just like, man, I, I'm, just, I'm just doing the wrong thing, and I, I just don't know how to do the right thing, and I know that I shouldn't be doing this thing, but I, but I just can't get out. I have no clue where you are, but what I do know is that whatever cave you are going in, you don't have to stay there. You can get out of that cave, yeah, yep. You can get out of that cave. You can get out of that cave and you don't have to do it by yourself. And, and I want you to remember that not only do you have Jesus to help you, man, you have some of the most amazing small group leaders on the planet. And man, I would just encourage you, if you're going through something that's challenging, if there's, if there's a valley or a cave that you are facing right now, make sure you talk to your leader about it today. Because they care about you so much. They love you. They want the best for you. They want you to win. They want you to be in a relationship with Jesus and remembering the fact that we can rest for the rest of our lives because the good shepherd laid down his life for us. Friends, let me pray for you before I hop off the stage.